Hey guys, thank you all so much for joining the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. I'm Jess Mason, founder and lead educator with the Yarnpreneur Society and Academy. And I'm Selena Baca, founder, host, and lead educator with the American Crochet Association. And together, Jess and I bring you the Yarn Life Show. Yes, get tangled up in this fun, upbeat educational channel that's dedicated to the Hanks, Skeins, balls, and cake that we love the most and the people who make the most of them because mm -hmm. yarn is life. Mm -hmm. Season two will stream live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. So please subscribe to this channel and you'll never miss an episode. That's right. And today's episode is sponsored in part by you good people watching. Please check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token tea, tote, or mug today. Now, every single purchase that you make over there not only gives you really great Yarn Life products that you're going to love, it also helps us here to create more great episodes and bring on even more amazing guests. You can find our Yarn Life swag shop link in the show notes section today. Awesome. So today for season two, episode eight, we're focusing on some underlying benefits of the yarn arts, mm -hmm. helping us to keep our identity and sanity. Mm -hmm. We may joke that punching people in the face is frowned upon, so we play with yarn instead. Um, but the reality is that the meditative benefits of focusing on a knitting or a crochet project really does have some serious healing properties. Mm -hmm. So today, Selena and I will be sharing a bit about our own personal experiences with the fiber arts and things we do to really utilize those healing powers. Absolutely. If you're watching live or on the replay, come on over and comment on this video and let us know if you have any questions uh, about the topic today. Let us know if you have any experiences to share because not only would we love to read them here live, but I'm sure our community would love to go back and read through those and really identify with them later on. So please comment away. Awesome. So I know that this is like, a, it's an interesting topic for a few reasons. We mm -hmm. can get a little deep and personal. And I think we all have these stories to share. Um, so both Selena and I are gonna share today. Um, but Selena, you're up first, are you ready? I'm up first. Are, are we gonna? <laughs> I, first, I, I totally skipped my part. So do we have anyone here watching that we should say hi to? Um, I always skip that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, I guess it's so it's so natural for me to just kind of have conversations with you that I forget that there are people watching sometimes. <laughs> well, let's see. We have one person checking in Random Randy's Ramblings. Awesome. That's, okay. a, that's a tongue twister. I that hi, is. Randy. She says yarn is cheaper than therapy. It's it helped me survive severe postpartum depression twice. That's awesome. Good for you. Linda says hi from the UK. Hi, Linda. I know Linda. I think everyone's, everyone's checking in now. So awesome. yeah, if you guys are here, share, um, share your stories if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, share those experiences with us because I think we all like to have that connection. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It brings us together. All right. So is it sharing time? I think it is. You've I, got the sharing stick. I know I do. My sh Wait, it's a crochet hook. I have the sharing stick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird for me. And, you know, I, I did a quick little live last night in the Yarn Life um, Facebook group just to let people know that this was coming. Um, Cause usually I, I don't really advertise really well that we're, you know, Hey, we're going live. Make sure you guys come and do this. Um, and this one was a little emotional for us. And I don't think I quite prepared emotionally for this. And I was like, Oh, we're just going to skim. It's going to be fine. But, um, you know, really I'm bringing up this time in my life that was really, um, kind of traumatic, I should say. And that's mm -hmm. you know, very like first world, first world problems. This is very traumatic for me. Um, you know, comparatively speaking, but I, I love that we're bringing this up now. You know, I know that people will be watching this anytime, but you know, we're, we're airing this towards the holiday season and, um, you know, the holiday season can make us very emotional, you know, either very good emotions or like kind of clinging emotions. Um, so this is kind of like, I, I love that we're bringing it up now because it's kind of like a mental health check. Like if, if people are struggling or even as we struggle, it's, it's, 
it's nice to remind ourselves that yarn can be really therapeutic. Um, yeah. So yes, I'm getting very, very personal today. And I really wanted to share some gritty truths about how crochet specifically, um, you know, helped me in, in my life. So it's helped me lots of times in my life, but the specific time that I wanted to share today was um, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, we were in the military, husband's in the military, and we just got stationed from Japan to England. And I was like eight months pregnant when we moved. And so here I am, eight months pregnant. We just move across the world. Um, and my husband, with the move, got a promotion. And he worked like literally 24-7. Like I did not see the man for like three years. And so we had that change. I was a new mom. Um and there, there was just, there were so many changes and um, I'm just going to skim over this because it's still this weird topic for me, but I was always very close with my parents. And when I had my son, they came to visit and it was not a good visit. Mm -hmm. I had a falling out and it was all of those things together, like, like, the first probably three or four months, like I literally, I moved to this place. A month later, I had a baby. And my parents came to visit and we had this huge falling out. My husband worked all the time. And I literally, like I went from this confident individual. I was this career driven person. Like I felt like I had all my ducks in a row and I was going to stay home with my son and enjoy England. And I literally just, I felt so lost. I completely lost my identity. I didn't know who I was anymore. Like I had some friends because in the military, like everybody knows everybody. And so like I had some friends, but I, I really felt like this sad, broken record. And I just, it wasn't postpartum depression. I, I don't think that's what it was because I had so many other factors that I was really just upset about. Like, yeah, you know, I, my parents were my good friends and I literally just lost them as friends. I lost them as people in my life. I didn't have my husband. He was my friend. Like he worked all the time. Like I was just this sad individual and I just did not know how to like get out of bed every day and function like as a human. And then I had to take care of this human. And I just like felt sorry for myself. Like it was just this terrible time. And I've always crocheted. Like it's just, it's something that like, I, I just, I can't sit still. So it's just something that I've always done. But I found that like I started literally obsessively crocheting like every single day. Like I, it was, it would just kind of like help me get out of myself. It would help me like turn my focus. Like it's something tangible that I can do and feel like honestly, like, like I, you know, wasn't like this depressed, sad person who had nothing to offer. Like it was something tangible, like when I'm meeting new people and I'm like, hi, I'm this, well, you know, Hey, Selena, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm sad all the time. And I just had a baby and like my, like, I felt like not that there was nothing good in my life, but like, I didn't know how to connect with people. Yeah. And so I found that I would, anytime I would go places or anytime I would meet new people or like in the military, there's always some kind of ridiculous function all the time. <laughs> I found that all these functions and like not literally not knowing how to connect with people. Like I would literally be the weird person like, oh, Selena, it's nice to meet you. Like, and I'd be like, it's, it's nice to meet you too. Aww. And so I started, I didn't know how to deal with that. And so I just started bringing yarn with me and crochet everywhere because it helped take the focus off not knowing how to talk to people. Yeah. Me, like when people would say, how are you doing? I, well, I, I didn't shower yesterday and I cried for most of the day. <laughs> like, I, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing in my life right now. And instead I'd be like, well, I made this hat yesterday. Like it was literally, I didn't even know that I was doing it at the time really consciously, but yeah. it was this redirect kind of conversation because I didn't know how to connect with people. I didn't know how to talk about myself. And then that turned into, because I wanted to have friends, I wanted to be around people, but I didn't know how to do that in a productive way. I turned to like, Hey Jess, you seem cool. Do you want to learn to crochet? I'll totally teach you. <laughs> And that's kind of how I combated, like, not knowing how to connect with people. I just, you know, I used crochet to 
instead of talk about myself, I would talk about these things that I was doing or these things that I was learning. I was learning, or instead of like, "Hey Jess, you want to go grab coffee?" It'd be, "Hey, you want to go crochet?" That's so, awesome. Yeah, that was kind of a long rambling thing, but um, and I didn't know specifically that I was using it to be therapeutic. That I was using it to get through and you know, kind of be a person again. Um, and it totally gave me this whole new identity now, like now I have this whole new identity because of it, but like, I understand how I was utilizing it at the time. And I guess the reason I wanted to share this is that I think a lot of people do this naturally. If they have something in their life that's traumatic, that they don't know how to deal with. I think that we turn to yarn, whatever we do with it, because it is meditative. It does help us you know, it is maybe something tangible that like you can point to. So like, hey, Jess, what are you working on? And instead of like, well, I'm totally working through these self-doubt issues, it's I'm working on Tunisian crochet. <laughs> like, Yeah. And I think it's also helpful. Uh, I think a lot of people find whether they, again, consciously, you know, acknowledge it or not. Yeah. Being able to sit down and say, every time I make a single crochet, like I know exactly what to do and I know what it's going to look like when it's done. Yes. Every time I make a double crochet, like I know what's involved in that. And I can from start to finish confidently say, if I have yarn and a hook in my hand, I can make And Same thing for the knitters out there. You know, if you're going to put some garter stitch together, cool, you know what it's going to look like. And I think that certainty of knowing what things are going to turn out like, especially when some other things might feel really uncertain. Mm -hmm. um, can provide us with that that place we can go and and know that things are going to turn out the way we want them to at the very least over there. <laughs> That's so well put. That's so well put, and I think that there's so much truth into that. That you know, when you when you do have this turmoil and uncertainty, like you can just say, you know. I'm just, I'm going to make this shawl and that's what I'm going to work on for the next two weeks. And yeah, you know, it's a goal. It's something to focus on. It's something that you can accomplish. Yeah. And it's that intangible, like not, you know, we're, we're dealing with things that are intangible, but it's this tangible thing that can help us, you know, yeah. working out our issues, I guess, or kind of redirect. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, Selena. I think that's very brave. It's, it's really like, I've honestly, and I've just kind of skimmed on a lot of it. And I gave you like the five minute version, but like, when I say that I had turmoil over that, like I, that that's literally probably like one of the hardest points in my life that I think I ever had to deal with. And, um, yeah, so that yarn helped you through it. Yeah. It's not something I talk about it a lot, but. I, I'm I'm glad that I, I feel that I have some things to share, you know, if others are going through something and they're feeling a certain way and maybe they need a way through it. Well, we appreciate you sharing. And I know uh, I'm going to read through a few of the comments real quick before I share my stories. Um, Amanda Woodbury says big hugs, Selena. Oh, thank you. Um, we had a lot of people checking in. Sophie from Canada. Um, Randy said she's here to listen while doing her dishes. I hope the dishes are going well. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's one of my favorite chores. I love doing the dishes. Uh, Brittany, <laughs> Brittany says hi from New York. Um, Natalia says hi. Let's see. Uh, Randy says you're singing my song. I'm close with my folks, but they're on the other side of the continent. Yeah, that can always make it difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, Amanda said, uh, it has helped me personally with coping with ADD, meditating, as well as stress relief. That's awesome. I know a lot of people actually who have used it for ADD and, and things along those those lines. Um, she said, I teach crochet to women to help them with anxiety, coping, mm -hmm. and building their confidence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, Simone says, crochet was just the start of my creativity. I crochet, bake, cook, sew, draw, and started lettering a few months ago. Oh, oh, I love lettering. Lettering is fun. Um, Amanda said she has one student that was able to survive a life-threatening depressive episode. That's that's fantastic. That's amazing. Mm. That is so amazing. Um, I think my my stories. Um, I came to fiber arts later in my life uh, wow. than. Selena did. You started when you were like four or something ridiculous. Yeah, overachiever. <laughs> um, but my grandmother taught me to crochet when I was about fifteen or sixteen, and 
uh, at the time she was my only remaining uh, grandparent. Um, and she passed away a year ago, about a, a little over a year ago actually. Um, so it was a way for me to connect with her. I would go to her house and spend the weekend and she'd pull out her crochet project and I'd pull out my crochet project. And she was always so excited to see what I was working on because um, as she used to say all the time, she was like, I just taught you single and double crochet and look what you've done. <laughs> um, so she was always, as grandmothers should be, um, quite enthralled with whatever it was that I was making, whether it was really that complicated or not. I would tell her all the time, it's not really that, she's like, you, this is fantastic. That was her thing. <laughs> Um, so that was a way for me to kind of connect with her. Um, we were very close and I spent a lot of time, um, enjoying, uh, both my craft and being able to sit next to the person who talked it to me. Um, so that was, that was really kind of how I got started in crochet. And then when I branched out into knitting and weaving and things like that, yarn just kind of exploded into my life. And um, when, I, when I had to make the decision to go to college, um, I didn't want to go, but um, it was kind of like, I was, I was at the point where I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I felt like a, a lot of people uh, in their early 20s or you know, kind of getting up to their 20s feel like they're not really sure what it is that they're gonna do with the rest of their life. Um, and the only thing I, the only two things I knew I really loved were dance, which I, I was already a dance teacher at the time, which I loved and, and yarn. So um, going through college, Every time I was stressed, I turned to one of those two things. I either danced or I played with yarn. <laughs> and I still do those two things to, to this day um, when I feel like I need to get away or, you know, as Selena was talking about, to have that feeling of accomplishing something, to start something and finish it and have a finished product that you can say, look at what I did. Um, and, and to be proud of a thing that you've created. Um, so for me, it all kind of revolves around um, eventually finding my career in those two things that I loved. Um, I've been teaching dance for over 10 years and I have been in the fiber art space, whether as a crochet designer or uh, an entrepreneur or a yarnpreneur um, for, you know, for I think about eight years now. So if you put all those things together um, and it's really given me, finally given me that purpose um, that I was missing, that place that I know I feel like really amazing when I'm here. And I, don't feel the need to kind of look outside anymore and be like, well, maybe I could have been a doctor. Maybe I could have been, I never would have been a doctor. <laughs> you know, maybe I could have been all of these other things, but I don't, I don't feel that way. I don't feel like I missed out on something. I felt like this was introduced into my life and I took it further than, um, you know, a lot of people do. And I'm really glad that I did. It's, it's taught me a lot. It's brought me a lot of amazing experiences. And yeah, whenever I feel like I'm not sure what is going on in this world, <laughs> um, I have something to, to take a step back and just sit down and, and create something. And I think that, uh, I think that a lot of us can, can relate to that. Um, I see Natalia saying that crochet definitely helps a very interesting topic yeah i think i think we all kind of have those own personal experiences of finding either peace you know just kind of sitting down and creating something with our hands mm -hmm. um or or finding that kind of relief and that meditative quality in uh in doing something like this um 
I want to read uh, Randy's comment. She says, my grandma's in a home with Alzheimer's and my dad took her a shawl and made her. She couldn't remember my name, but she knew it was crochet and commented on the stitches. That is, I'm trying not to cry right now. Just FYI. <laughs> um, hard one. I know. She says, breaks my heart, but in a weirdly good way. Yeah, that's, that's amazing that she can identify what that is. And I'm sure she is very grateful. Yeah. So that's. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Randy. Um, Absolutely. Just something that I, you know, to, to touch on what you're saying um, about the fiber arts, you have so many qualities that you've, skills and qualities that, you know, most people as they're kind of going through life, they cultivate these skills and these qualities. And sometimes we really separate, like, I'm really good at this and I do this, but that's what I do on the side. And then they have yeah. this career that maybe they have to escape from and, you know, go on these month long vacations every year or, you know, take up yoga or something. But yeah. what I find so refreshing about you and why I think we've been friends for so long is that we're, we, we are very much the type of people who that's one and the same, like we cultivate skills and we do have interests, but it's it, there, everything that we do is a lifestyle choice and it's a lifestyle style change. And yeah. while we, compartmentalize some of those things. Like I was just talking to you about how, yeah, I work on that, but I only do that on Mondays. Like, you know, we compartmentalize yeah. things, but really everything that we do is integrated. And I think that you are one of the few people that I know that actively meditates, like you not reading, not doing anything, you actively meditate. And I love that yeah. you, you say that because we don't think about it like this way. Or, you know, we, we do say things like, you know, I, I crochet, so I don't, because punching people in the face. <laughs> yeah. Like that. But I mean, there's so much hidden truth to that. Not that we would punch people in the face otherwise. But um, what, I, what that means to me is that, like, it does give you this meditative pause. And you yeah. all have that. You, you do that actively. But I, I always forget that there are these meditative qualities to this. Um, and I think that that's why all of this suits you so very well. It's such a perfect fit Thank for you. you. That's kind of like a, a compliment rolled into an assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it, it's always been important to me from yeah. fifth grade when they asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, like I, I remember exactly what it was. It was me and my two best friends and we all danced and we were like, we're going to open a dance studio. Um, you know, I remember that, but some people would call it being naive. Some people would call it, you know, being uh, immature. But for me, I never let go of that. Yeah. That it was important to me to be as excited about what I did every day as my friends were about like leaving work at five o'clock, <laughs> you know, like I, I would rather spend my life doing things that I enjoy. And I know all of us would, and I know all of us don't have the option. Um, so yeah. I'm lucky enough to have the option and I've, and I've taken it. Yeah, um, but yeah, that, that's always kind of been my, my life and my work if they're indistinguishable, then I'm doing my job right, <laughs> you know? You know, another thing I love about you saying that is that, yeah, you're right. You know, we are fortunate enough to be able to, you know, because this is our, this is our career, you know, literally, yeah. you know, we can literally play with yarn almost all day. Um, but there is so much joy in playing with yarn and, and doing things with you knit or crochet or loom or whatever, weave, whatever it is that you do. Like there's so much joy to it. Nobody does this just because they're like, Oh man, I hate crochet, but I got to make this hat. Like, you know, sometimes <laughs> we cook and we're like, Oh, I hate cooking, but I got to make dinner for my family. You know? Yeah. No one does this because they hate it. And they're just looking for an end result. Like it's just yeah. about the journey. And you know, I, I love that it's okay to identify like this makes me insanely happy and I love doing it and remembering that, remembering that it, it gives you that joy. It gives you that, you know, it, it allows you to meditate. It allows you to find value. It allows you to maybe have a different conversation and connect with people when you don't really know how to do that. Yeah. 
And so that was another, those are some other really, really important things that I, I thought would be great to kind of highlight out of the show today. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is a topic that we could talk about for a really long time. There's so yeah. many different facets to, um, the craft and, and what it can do beyond just teach you how to make a hat, you know? <laughs> um, but I think that's awesome. Amanda says, I love my job as a crochet business owner. It never really feels like work. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, my, there's a, a quote that I love and it says, go make a life, not a living. And that's exactly what I've always, you know, strive to do. And I think, you know, we can all kind of say that's, that's the goal that we're reaching for. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today's episode might have been a little personal, um, but that's that's okay. That's what we're here for. Getting personal might show that we're not alone, and you guys are definitely not alone. So if you would like to share how yarn has helped you, please leave us a comment. We've already had some amazing stories shared today, um, or you can join our Facebook group to share and start a conversation there today. Um, I think... I think we've gone through all the comments. Everybody had some really amazing things to share. Um, oh, up. that concludes our episode. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Please join us again for episode nine of 10. We're almost done. I know. So sad. We're almost done. Fun. We're having fun. Um, <laughs> we are having fun. Um, so we're going to outline another great topic for everyone who enjoys the yarn life next week. So make sure to uh, stick around. That's right. That's right. Now remember today's episode is sponsored in part by you amazing viewers. Uh, so to do that, please check out our yarn life swag shop to pick up a token tea tote or mug today, because every purchase that you make there helps us to create more great content, give you more episodes and bring on even more amazing guests. You can find that shop link in the show notes section today. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining this episode of the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. We'll see you all next time. Until next time, peace, love, crochet, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.